everybody's very, very welcome indeed for this um, research forum on the Research and Innovation Bill. Uh, my name is Jane Olmeyer, and I'm going to be the chair for uh, the next hour. And folks, we will try and finish at five to the hour. We're very conscious that people have other meetings to go to. Um, and uh, I just want to kick off the proceedings by inviting uh, the Trinity's uh, Dean of Research just to say very quickly a few words uh, of welcome. But what the Research and Innovation Bill means uh, from an institutional perspective. So please, Sinead. Well, thanks very much, Jane. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. So I would just like to start by welcoming everybody who's in the room and joining us online to this really important conversation. Um, and a special thanks to the panel for taking time as well to join us. Uh, and I think it was going to be an interesting uh, 45 to 50 minutes of conversation. I won't take too much of your time, I promise. Um, but maybe let me just make a, a few observations. The first is that um, I think in the last few weeks, what we've seen, I've actually found to be a very positive experience, a very heartening experience, which is the engagement of the entire community in discussion and debate about what it means to fund research, um, what it means to have a new funding agency come to fund research. And I think that depth of and breadth of discussion and engagement says something very positive about uh, how we all go about our, our daily business and how we engage in, in research. There are legitimate concerns, I think, uh, which we'll hear about today, I'm, I'm sure, in the discussion and in the panel session. But maybe, again, just an observation, I think those very legitimate concerns come from a place of deep ambition and enthusiasm for research. What we want to see and what we hope for is a funding agency that really supports and enables research across the entire breadth of disciplines, across all career stages. And so the concerns that are expressed are really going towards, as I said, a constructive engagement to build the agency that we want to see, that we think we should have ambition to deliver on the research that we can do as, as a country. And so it's really fantastic that Jane and colleagues have really supported, enabled, and driven the discussion in this very constructive way, but I think with a, with a view for how it means to do research in Ireland and actually how it should be to do research in Ireland, which is, I think, the important point. Um, from my perspective, I, I just want to say, maybe just make three short observations about the new funding agency, what it might do, and, and how it might be uh, co constituted and governed. The, the first is really that, again, going back to the theme of ambition, we have a deep ambition to fund research at levels beyond where we are at the moment, uh, meeting targets that we have previously as a country set for ourselves. So let's just try to get there. To get there, we have to together across all disciplines be able to make a case for the impact that our research has, not just in science and innovation, but on society more generally and in the longer term. So that's something that we can look forward to as a, as a single agency, for example, an integrated and, and uh, um, uh, holistic view of the importance of research. But to get there, we have to have, and we have to clearly demonstrate parity of esteem across all disciplines so that all of our research is measured and conducted on the basis of research excellence, whatever that might mean in the different disciplines, and that research is available, research support is available for all researchers in different modalities, top-down and bottom-up research across all career stages. And then my last point is how do we, how do we see that? How do we make sure that those uh, ambitions and parity of esteem that we value so much are recognized and realized in a new funding agency? And I strongly believe that is through governance clear, transparent, and representative governance of a new funding agency will demonstrate parity of esteem and will demonstrate the ambition to support all of research. So those, from my perspective, I think are the three main points that I would like to get across, but I'm not the person that you've come here to listen to. So I will hand back uh, to Jane now and Jane, you can kick off the proceedings. Thank you very much, Jane. Well, you've certainly set the agenda uh, brilliantly. 
We're now actually going to hear from Simon Harris, uh, uh, but let me just give a wee bit of context. Um, basically, back, oh my goodness, uh, uh, the Heads of Bill were published uh, Good Friday or Holy Thursday. It was the beginning of the eve of the Easter uh, recess. Um, and we organised an event uh, here uh, in Trinity, I think it was the 17th of April, uh, my colleagues in CAVE, uh, uh, Nicole and John Walsh, were particularly uh, helpful in allowing us to begin a conversation, because if we're being very honest, we were really quite uh, uh, gobsmacked that there hadn't been uh, a conversation and consultation about the heads of bill uh, prior to that. Out of that session uh, came this decision to write an open letter to Minister Harris. Uh, that letter is still open. If you haven't signed it, please go online and do so. Um, my hope is that we'll have two and a half thousand signatures uh, in the very near future. But we decided then to deliver the, the uh, letter to Minister Harris last Tuesday. And a number of us, uh, many of who are here in the room, uh, went up to the department and uh, he very kindly invited us in. And we had a conversation with him. So uh, obviously we're very grateful to the minister for uh, a number of commitments there. Parity of esteem is hugely important. I must say uh, he talked about he talked about a federated structure uh, when we met with him, and uh, Luke and Nicole were in the room uh, uh, with me. He didn't mention a new council for the arts, humanities, and social sciences, so that was a bit of a surprise uh, for me. I'm assuming if there is a new council for the arts, humanities, and social science, there will be a new council for STEM and ideally for infrastructures as well. In other words, a federated system is more than one council, but I think we're gonna find out in the discussion with Deirdre uh, that uh, uh, this is very much open for discussion. Another model might be the European route uh, where we've got a uh, uh, European Research Council, the European Innovation Council, um, and we, we might want to model ourselves uh, uh, on Europe. I was also very heartened to hear about uh, additional funding for research. I think one thing we all need to see is a doubling of the budget and 70% of that budget to be earmarked uh, for basic frontier research. Anyway, without further ado, uh, I think it would be really helpful if our panel wouldn't mind uh, joining us. So please, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, taking the stage. And as they do that, I'll introduce uh, some people who probably don't need uh, much of an introduction. Um, uh, uh, Ivana Bacic is the leader of the Labour Party, um, uh, a TD and formerly of this parish uh, where she was the Reed Professor of Law. Uh, Luke O'Neill is Professor of Biochemistry here in Trinity and um, again is, is, is one of these uh, colleagues who really doesn't need uh, uh, much of an introduction. Uh, Emma Sockle comes from UCD. She is the new president of IFOOT. So congratulations, uh, Emma. I believe that happened on Saturday. IFOOT uh, was in the room with us um, when we met uh, with Minister Harris, and it's great that you're with us today. Uh, Nicole Volmering, again, Nicole has been so active in getting this conversation going. Uh, she's a research assistant professor and a PI on an SFI IRC pathway uh, project uh, based here in Trinity. So Nicole, in a sense, represents what the future might begin to look like. But very importantly, we feel that these discussions are about how we are ambitious about our sector, especially for our early career researchers, our postgraduates, our postdocs, and those who are uh, uh, early on in their career. And last but not least, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Deirdre Lillis, who's the Assistant Secretary with Responsibility for Research, Innovation and International in uh, the Department of Further Higher Education, uh, 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 Research, Innovation and Science. I'll just call it the department. It's, it's such a, a mouthful. Um, what I, I'm going to do is just kick this off with a few questions uh, for the panel. But please, those of you who are online, if you have questions, uh, we're delighted to take them. And obviously in the room, we'll try and leave a good 15 minutes for questions and, and longer, uh, uh, if depending on, on how direct and brief uh, uh, our, our colleagues answer these. Um, uh, it's really important people feel that their voices have been heard. This is part of the consultation uh, process, albeit ones that we have generated ourselves. And it sort of takes me to the process and when we're now at. And Ivana, I'm going to start with you because you're here as a politician, uh, somebody who understands the workings uh, of uh, uh, the Oireachtas better than any of us. 
Um, uh, the Heads of Bill were published. Um, they're going to be heard by uh, the Joint Oireachtas Committee on the 9th and the 16th. Um, obviously, there are concerns about the Heads of Bill as currently drafted. What opportunities are there for us actually to shape this conversation, given that there hasn't been more uh, uh, consultation uh, 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 before this? And I'll invite our speakers to make sure your mic is on because uh, the acoustics in this room are not great and people online won't hear us if, if your mic's not on. But Ivana, could you just comment on where we are and how we can shape things? Sure, thank you, Jane. Thanks for the invitation to be here. Uh, delighted to be here. Um, and just to extend congrats to Emma as I foot president, it's my union. I'm delighted to still be a member despite uh, no longer teaching here, but, um, but lovely to be back always. And I just want to thank Ursula Quill in the audience for um, really alerting me to the issues in the scheme. And just to commend you, Jane, and Luke and your colleagues for organising the letter, because I think that was a really good way of, of uh, I suppose, letting people know, highlighting issues that are in the bill, or in the, rather in the scheme of the bill. And I should say I'm a signatory now to the letter too. Um, so on the legislative process, and of course Deirdre can also speak to this, but the good news is this is early in the, in the process. The heads of bill have been published, so there's 56 heads in nine parts of the bill. But this is what we, this is really essentially a draft piece of legislation. So it's, it's, it's late in a drafting sense because it's already been approved at cabinet, but it is not yet a bill and it has to become a bill before it goes formally before the Oireachtas, before the Dáil and Shannon. I think I see another Oireachtas colleague, Alice Mary, Senator Alice Mary Higgins in the audience, an NUI senator. So um, Alice Mary and, and I would both have a strong interest in this. So when you say, Jane, it's going to the Education Committee, uh, it'll go tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. for the first of two pre-legislative scrutiny stages. This is what we call it. This, this is quite a new, a new, relatively new process where it gives stakeholders an opportunity to input on the shape of the final version of the bill that goes to the Oireachtas. Obviously, the final version of the bill that goes to the Oireachtas can still be amended at both Dáil and Shannon stages. So as I say, we're at an early point. What we have is this general scheme with heads that will become a bill, but it, the heads or provisions in the, in the scheme can be changed at this stage. So tomorrow, the first of these preliminary pre-legislative scrutiny hearings will involve hearings at 11 with the uh, IUA, with FEA and with the HECEA. So in other words, the, sort of the governance bodies of the universities association and so on. And then at 12.30, ICTU, IFUT, the TUI, the Research um, uh, Student Association and USI are all going to give evidence before the committee. So the Education Committee is made up of different TDs and senators with an interest in education. Our Labour Education Spokesperson, Deputy Aon O'Reardon, is on it. And I'm delighted, you know, I'll, I'll be briefing Aon fully after today. And um, we've already spoken about, the, about the, the concerns academics have about the bill and about the lack of consultation prior to the publication of the heads. But as I say, I suppose, Jane, just to finish, the good news is you've come in early. This is a great is great to have this sort of process. And uh, it does mean that the heads of bill can be can be changed significantly. And one would think they may well be. For instance, Ursula and I were frantically looking through the heads there to see as the minister spoke to see. Can we see a reference to this Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences Council within the bill, I don't, uh, within the heads? And I don't think it's there, but it's welcome to hear the minister say that will be in the final version of the bill that goes before the Oireachtas formally when the bill starts its formal legislative process. But we're not yet at that stage. Thank you very much, Ivana. Can I ask, though, two days to scrutinise a bill that will shape the landscape for generations? Uh, any opportunities that that might be extended? And others, I'm thinking here of the Royal Irish Academy, the Irish Humanities Alliance, also, the two and a half thousand nearly people who have signed um, uh, this open letter for others to have an opportunity to, to, to interact with uh, uh, the, the, the committee. I haven't seen this, the list of witnesses for the second hearing on the 16th of May yet. Um, so it may well be that the RIA and others are there. But at this stage, it is possible, of course, to uh, for all those interested, particularly the 2000 plus signatories, to um, to engage with uh, the TDs and senators who are members of the committee. The Cahirlock or chair is Paul Kyo. I think Alice Mary from your group, Eileen Flynn is on, as I've said, Aon from our Labour group. Um, so there's different there's people, obviously TDs and senators representing all the other parties and groups in the Oireachtas on the committee. So uh, it's well worth 
uh, individuals and organisations contacting Paul Keogh's chair and the other committee members to ask that a more extensive consultation be engaged with. For instance, you know, some of our committees have um, engaged in public consultation. So in other words, inviting members of the public to make submissions. Uh, the pre-legislative scrutiny tends to just hear from interested groups and parties. But if you look at the list, and we, we can, I can share the list for the 16th of May with you later, Jane, you know, if we look at the list of witnesses for tomorrow and then for the 16th and see that there's obvious bodies or, in, or in organizations missing, then contact Paul Keoha's chair in particular. You know, paul.keohoe at arachtus.ie. And uh, um, or you'll see on the committee website, on the Arachtus website, you'll see a direct link for the Education Committee clerk. So if you email the clerk, Alice Mary, you might have the address. I just mentioned Alice Mary, no, we can't, we can hear you, but people online oh, sorry, can't I'll hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Okay. So Alice Mary has indicated that there's already been a request made to the committee for at least one further third hearing to take place before the Education Committee. But as I say, it's open to any individual who's an interest in this or any organisation to contact the committee through the chair, ideally, or through the clerk and to seek more extensive consultation period and a longer period. I don't, I don't, the Deirdre may have a time frame in the, that will be in the minister's plan as to when he's hoping the bill will be drafted, but generally it would be following, following the hearings of the Education Committee. They then supply a report to the department and the minister, and the minister then takes on board the recommendations and, and the uh, findings of the pre-legislative scrutiny stage, and then incorporates those into drafting the bill itself that will then go before the Oireachtas. So Deirdre will be able to say what sort of time timeline the minister is envisaging, but it can always be delayed. If there's a huge groundswell, as we see with the letter, for instance, Jane, a huge groundswell of people and, you know, and stakeholders want to see longer time frame, then it sounds from the, what the minister said as if he's open to that. Okay, let's, I know people have questions. I'm asking you to hold your questions. Um, hold them for now. We'll come back to them, sir, if you don't mind. Just wait. I'd like to go to Deirdre Lillis. Um, uh, uh, Deirdre, can you talk us through that timetable that Ivan has just uh, referenced? Sure, and I... And Deirdre, your, your, your mic, uh, just, uh, yeah, the, the, as I say, the acoustics, we need mics. Is any better? Yeah. That's okay. Um, I, I'm always a firm believer in, in uh, knowing what your starting point is. Um, I think what we're trying to achieve in the department, um, it really is about finding a balance and finding a middle path. Um, I think we're trying to support everything from the AI tech entrepreneur who's going to develop the software, who's going to create our future, to the researcher looking at old Irish manuscripts that will shed light on our past, you know, so that is the breadth of, of what we're trying to, to achieve here. Um, in relation to consultation, I think it's really important to, to note that this minister has conducted probably the most extensive conversation with the RNI community ever undertaken in, in Ireland through the Impact 2030 consultation. We had the Creating Our Future um, campaign last year, 18,000 responses to that right across our community. We had the HEA bill going through the Oireachtas last year. All of those reached out. What we got back from all of those was a very, very consistent, very strong message. You know, excellent research in all its forms at all career stages in all re research disciplines are highly valued. Absolutely, no question. The work that IRC are doing, the work that SFI are doing are highly valued by their communities as well. Um, we got a very strong message. We needed to do more on parity of esteem, um, more on in interdisciplinary research, more on challenge-based research, mm -hmm. more around, as Sinead said, demonstrating the impact of our research so that the funders take this take note and, and come back and fund it the way we want to. We needed to do more on EDI and we needed to do more on connecting researchers with policymakers. What you see, I think, in the heads of bill is everything that SFI are currently doing, everything that IRC are currently doing are being moved across to this new agency and there are additional functions um, that have come from the Impact 2030 strategy and those consultations. So that's what has informed the heads of bill. I think a key point for me is we have to strike a balance here. There is a window of opportunity to get this done. Um, are we going to lose six or eight or 10 months of that window? 
on consultation to tell us largely what we already know, in fairness. Are there things that need clarifying in the heads? Absolutely. Do we need to nuance language? We do, absolutely. That's the purpose of the PLS process. Um, we are anxious to move this because we have this, this wind of opportunity right now. Um, so hopefully that will give some sense of our thinking. Oh, th th thank you. I mean, maybe come back to you, Deirdre, but I'd love to turn to, in a sense, the academic community uh, for, for a moment um, and ask maybe, Luke, if you would, wouldn't mind kicking it off and, and saying, well, obviously, we, the benefits of getting this right are huge. For you, what should that new agency look like? Because the devil's always in the detail here. Well, we said to the minister, uh, this could be a legacy thing for the minister, because if we get this right, it's going to be fantastic. You know, my dream is to see articles in all our eminent journals saying Ireland backs the future in a major substantial way. You know, we should be a beacon for all of Europe, if I can use what sounds like a very high blown phrase. But, but why, why shouldn't Ireland aspire to be the best country in the EU for research? That should be our aspiration. And that should be in this bill. I'd start with that. I think the minister kind of gets that idea, by the way. But and, and, and wouldn't it be wonderful as well uh, if all if we're all behind it? In other words, there's massive unity of purpose here. That, that's got to be the goal. There's the constant dissent, isn't there? <laughs> Always. But for once, let's get in behind this and make sure it's in the direction that we wanted to go in. Um, I've got two big worries, though. The constitution of the board is essential, you know? To get that right is critical. There isn't a single scientist at the moment on SFI's board. Outrageous, you know, <laughs> for a kickoff. So that board is really key. And again, the balance is the key word, you know. We have to have professional researchers on this, there's no question that's, that, that, that's a, a big concern I have. And inevitably it's the money. You know, everybody wants money all the time, don't they? Everybody's banging the door down saying there's all this money available. We need to make a very strong case for this. And it's a case that can be easily made. The impact of what we do is huge on the world, both in the humanities, all across all disciplines, it's huge. And I can give examples from my side, of course. On Monday, for example, I bet you don't know that the biggest biotech conference in Europe is happening in Dublin. It's called the Bioequity Conference. Uh, this is all biotechs and pharma come to Ireland. It's held in Dublin this year. All the investors are going to be, and I'm taking part in a session on Monday afternoon about how universities have impacted on research. And we've loads of examples. You know, we have our first unicorn company, by the way. But Jane didn't know what that was, but uh, it's a company with a value of a billion euro called Amrit. That came out of academic research. My company, Inflazon, came out of my lab. You know, so in other words, we can easily make the case. Now we need to keep making it. And we're up against the farmers who are, I'm not picking on them, by the way, I just pick them randomly. Um, they, they were so committed, Jane, they walked to their, uh, for their protest, didn't they? You know? But we're up against all these interest groups and we've got to make our case. And, and there's no doubt we can make the case. But the challenge is, it's a 5, 10, 15 year time frame, you know. There's no point in us doing, say, in my side, just applied research, because you're always behind the curve there. If you make the initial discovery, there's huge value to Ireland with those discoveries. Those kinds of cases we can make. And I hope, I hope our voice will be heard along those lines. I love that. Ireland backs the future. I hope everybody's tweeting that one out, uh, along with Love Irish Research. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Luke. Telling our story is something I think we'll come back to. I know my colleague, uh, 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 Nora, uh, Campbell wants to talk to that, uh, uh, come back to you, uh, Nora, about that one. Can we move on uh, to iFoot? And Emma, you're a physicist, but you're the new president of iFoot. How do you uh, see this, uh, uh, the new landscape and the opportunity that, that it affords us? Is that working? Bring it right up to you. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think, of course, like everything that's been said, because we do need to all be together, but I think as well, iFoot will be particularly concerned that it's about our researchers all the way through their career stages and to make sure that Ireland is a fantastic place, a leading place for researchers to do their career and those supports exist all the way through, right from postgraduate research through uh, postdoctoral research careers to make sure that the journey, career journey is sensible for those and all the way into academics. And uh, the other point I'd like to make again, again is around the breadth of esteem. Uh, it's really important not only that uh, we talk about arts and humanities and social sciences but, and challenge-based research, but we talk about the science that underpins those challenges as well, because without that, Luke's already said it, but I want to say it again, without that kind of ecosystem, we don't know where the next challenge is going to come from, and we need to be ready to 
be leading the way and not following what's happened elsewhere. Um, my final point is it's about the people, it's about the intellectual effort, including giving us academic freedom, but also about the science infrastructure or the strategic infrastructure, because research for science, research for humanities has to be underpinned by the facilities that enable that. Thank you, Thank you uh, Emma. I, I, Ireland is a leader. Uh, future proofing, you know, these are the sorts of things, of course, we want to see reflected uh, in the legislation. And it may not carry weight from a legal perspective, but it shows our ambition. Um, and words do matter. Uh, so anyway, can I, it, Nicole, um, Emma talked there about all career stages. Uh, obviously, you're in a slightly different place in your career. You're an IRC SFI Pathway, uh, Pathways PI, um, uh, but you have received funding uh, from the IRC earlier on in your career. Uh, and you represent the future, along with our other uh, uh, students. Uh, what is this looking like from your perspective? Yeah, so I think speaking as a researcher, we're all right, very much fine. concerned about what this means for our future, because it will be the future. And it's actually going to be the future from um, from January onwards, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, this body is coming into existence in January. So as researchers, we tend to plan at least one or two or three years ahead for the types of funding that we need for the next stages in our career. And so one of the things um, that I think is important that I'd like to say to the department, but also that I think is important to bear in mind as this institute is being created, is that we need a stability of funding streams and that we need uh, funding streams across all research careers, as well as um, across different backgrounds, that we have stability and equality of opportunity across these, um, these streams, um, going all the way from postgraduate students who are asking me now, what can I do next, to our senior colleagues here in the department who say, where is my next advanced grant coming from? Um, the important thing here is that the this new body will be funding not just projects, and obviously research projects are always precarious, they're always project funding, um, but it's no longer a short-term thing. A research career is a, is a long-term career, and that's the kind of thing that I'd like the department to bear in mind as they are planning how they are going to create this research, this research landscape. Uh, thanks to everybody who signed the open letter, continues to be part of the conversation. As I say, lots of little asks can, I mean, little actions can really uh, uh, show that our voices uh, matter and are being heard. I, I'd like to thank Minister Harris for seeing us last week and for the uh, uh, message that he uh, kindly uh, produced for us today or delivered today. Um, uh, I'd like to thank Valerie Smith. This began, this was our Arts and Humanities a faculty meeting, um, which we morphed into this. So dear, uh, thank you, Valerie, for organizing it. Thank you to colleagues in the Trinity Longroom Hub who are always amazing in the support that they give. I'm very, very grateful uh, to you all, but also extremely grateful to our great panel uh, for, I think, just the honesty, the passion, the enthusiasm, the vision, the ambition. So thank you, folks, and long may this continue. So thank you very much indeed.